Well, praise God. It's so good to get to see you today. I'm Dave Avanzini, and uh, I just wanted to encourage you today. I've, uh, you know, there's times whenever God allows you to look behind the veil and see some things that are taking place in your life that he's been orchestrating. And suddenly you can start seeing the pattern and the way that things come together in a manner that you could have never done on your own, but it becomes much more clear to you how God, if you will just allow him to have his way with your life, trust him, rely on him, make decisions based on what you know you hear that he wants done. There's something that takes place in life that happens. And, and you know, I just want to share just a little bit of a trek of some things that have gone on. And it's a, it, it started probably a little bit before COVID hit. Uh, my wife and I, now, now I want you to watch how God works on some stuff because this is amazing. Now follow with me all the way through this because as you see the pattern, it looks all of a sudden you realize there is no way that man could have ever made the decision to orchestrate something and see how it comes together the way it is right now. So, so just bear with me and just hear what this is. But I believe this is going to help some of you because hear me very clear right now. A lot of you out there today, you're doing stuff that you know God's told you to do. And the reason you do it is simply because you've heard his voice. You know what he's told you to do. You know what you're supposed to do. And as you're moving forward on that, suddenly you've got an issue that you're out here doing it. You don't understand why. And, and sometimes we just we just lose hope and give up. And I'm telling you, don't give up. Watch what, well, watch what God did in my life. I want you to get a clear understanding of this. I was not in the ministry when COVID hit. Whenever COVID started, uh, March of, I guess, 2020, uh, I was I had my own company. I was doing maintenance on uh, a lot of these strip centers. You know, these strip malls you see around. I was in that. My wife was a senior property manager for a major uh, uh, company here that she was doing property management for. I was working. We Everything was going great. I had uh, about 14 major contracts that I had that were absolutely God was blessing everything. But I can't say that we were doing everything exactly right, but my wife and I had made the decision of this. We said, we are going to do right. We're, we're going to start cutting on the dotted line. My mom, she used to always say, now, David, if you'll just cut on the dotted line, then you won't have to go through a lot of the trouble you've gone through. And you and I both know that we all know better than our parents do whenever we're young. And I've always done a little bit different, but I made the decision and my wife came together and we said, we are not going to make mistake this time. We do not have enough time to restart again. So we developed these businesses and things were going great. Wonderful. But then whenever COVID hit just beforehand, my wife and I, now watch this. We had a, a house over in the Metroplex that we were looking at purchasing a brand new house. And it was on an oversized lot. It's about a 15,000 square foot lot that we were looking at. And when we were getting ready to do that, they were selling that, it to us. And we had all of our contracts signed, ready to go, everything moving forward, no problems. But all of a sudden, they realized that they were selling us this lot, this house, brand new on this oversized lot, but they were not selling it to us on the price of an oversized lot. And they said, now, look, we're not going to be able to honor this, but we'll put you in another neighborhood somewhere and it'll be fine. You'll just be on a smaller lot in another area. We don't want to be in one of those areas. We felt like that was what we were supposed to do. But we just said, you know what, God, we trust you. And, and believe it or not, at the same time, I said, you know what, if you can't sell it to me, if you won't sell it to me, you're not going to sell it to anybody. I'm going to get it tied up in court. And that night we went home and just said, God, we want what you want. What are you telling us? Because we are believing you and we're trusting you. And what, what happened? That night, God opened, a, there was a house that had been on the market. It's not a new house. It was a house that had been on the market for some time now. And all of a sudden, they dropped the price by about $80,000. Pretty crazy to drop a house that much. That night we saw it. 
And my wife, she all of a sudden, she she woke me up in the middle of the night. She said, David, this is my house. I, God is, this is the house we're going to live in. God is going to give us this house. And we could afford it. It was less than the other house. It was brand new. It was much nicer, nice pool, better location, everything about it. It was run down. It did not have all of the upgrades on it. But you know what? Whenever you make a decision, God, I'm going to be a good steward for you. Sometimes you make the decision that you're not just going to all of a sudden go and buy the very best of the best. If you can make some things work along the way and build equity. So we started in on this. Now, I wasn't approved for the house. I didn't have anything going on where I could guarantee that I was getting it. We had uh, a loan company that said, we're going to get, yeah, we can get you uh, signed up for that. Well, this house, believe it or not, we found out later on as we were talking to the realtor, the woman who, uh, lived in the house, she had moved into, she had gotten Alzheimer's and she had gotten to a point to where she was not able to live on her home. And she was in a home for about a year and the children had been taking care of this house and they were just at a point to where they had just done it for as long as they could. So they ended up making the decision. They were just going to try and just sell the house. Well, I got in here and somebody else saw the house the same night. We put in our bid, they put in their bid. Bam. We're sitting there in a bidding war on this house. And we said, you know what? Just give them full price, and we're just going to believe God. We believe God. Now, I don't recommend this for everybody, but this house was overrun with everything under the sun. There was just oh, crazy. My wife and I showed up here every minute we had that we had extra, and we started working on the house. They said that they would sell it to us. We ended up in a point where we were in a contract with them on it, but... But once we knew we were in there and we knew that this house was just overrun, it was just bad. We just got in there. We started cleaning up the hedges. The neighbors came and introduced them to our, themselves to us. There's still a for sale sign in the front yard. And I am out here working on this house because we knew God had given us this house. Now, people came in. It finally got to the point to where the owner's son one day showed up and found us here. He offered to pay. A, he said, do we need to give you more money for the work you're doing on the house? He said, no, we just want to get in the house. So finally, we end up closing on the house. The day we're closing on the house was the day before COVID totally exploded. Now, it was the day after. I take that back. We just took and they everything happened. I lost all 14 of my contracts as everybody just said, no, we're not doing anything else. We're going to see what where this takes us. My wife, my wife, she was uh, she was laid off for the time at that point. And we sat there and said, now, do we sign the contract on this house or not? God, we know you told us that this is our house. Are we going to sign the contract? And we said, you know what, God, we know we've heard from you. We stepped out in faith, said, I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but you're going to have to take and do something. Well, believe it or not, we signed the contracts and the entire Economy stopped. Everything stopped. They stopped taking payments. We were able to get on our feet. We started down some roads of making some things develop and work some things up. God worked with us through it. And let me say, that's a blessing in itself, knowing that. But that's not what I want you to see. Because as we continued, we got back on our feet. We got settled. Then we started working with the ministry. My mother passed away. Everything changed in my dad's situation. And watch this. Watch this. My father is purchasing the house right next door to me right now. He's purchased it. They're remodeling it. And he's going to be right there. We work together in our studio. I deal with him. I'm working with him on the television broadcast that he does on Love World, all of the different places. And God is allowing him to be right here. Now, that house wasn't for sale at the time. That house was absolutely just... Never could have imagined it. In the neighborhood where I lived before, if I would have pushed through and just said, no, we're going to do this. This is just what we're going to do. But as we said, God, whatever you tell us to do, and this door opened, and we said, God, we're walking through it. Now, the devil brought up all of a sudden shows me that he's going to fight against us and say, no, you're going to have all your economy, all of your finances shut down, and you're not going to be able to do anything. Are you still going to sign the contract? Well, what did God say? God said yes. And as God, we understood that his promises were yes and amen. And we knew that we had heard from God. We understood. It wasn't that we were questioning whether God wanted this done or not. We knew it. We took the leap of faith. 
got to understand every time you go to a new level with God, there's a leap of faith you got to take. And God wants to bless some of you out there. And as you are going through different parts of your life right now, doing different things, you might not understand why it's going the way it is. But if you will stand on his word, what did God tell you? What is it you know took place in your life that God has said to you that you can say, God, I don't care what it is the devil's trying to do in my life right now. I know what you said. If you will begin to stand on those promises, be able to flow with God whenever he tells you to flow. Don't just get rigid in it. Don't get hard in your situation. Be ready to hear from him. I'm telling you right now, God's going to open up doors like you can't believe. Um, so many different things that are taking place. I'll tell you more about some of these things later on, but I just want to encourage you right now, whatever it is that God has talked to you about, and you know you've heard from him, some of you know, you know God has given you promises. This is a time not to sit there and look at all of the things around you and say, man, look how big the waves are. Look at all the, look at the economy. How could it be that God is doing what it is he said? Maybe I didn't hear from God. You know you heard from God. You stand. And you say, God, I know what you've said to me. I know your your voice because you know what? I am your servant. I'm close to you. I know your voice when I hear it. And when you take and you stand on that, I'm believing with you right now that you're going to see God move. I believe right now. Now, let me tell you one other thing. Whatever else you're praying for, uh, my, my daughter, we're looking for Sierra, my daughter, to be able to get a certain job. We have been standing on this thing. We started, we prayed the job in. But you know what? We've had some things come up where it didn't look like she was going to get it. But each step along the way, we knew what God had said. He said, God, we're not giving this up. If if there's going to be the only way we're going to take and accept that this is not you is if something better comes along. But we're not just going to sit here and make the decision that, well, there's a struggle, so we're not going to be believing God. No. You stand, you start, whatever God has told you, I want to agree with you right now, but just rebuke doubt. And I don't understand what happened. I put in, I put a comment. If you look up, just, just scroll down and look at the last thing I wrote. I put in there about me adjoining my faith with you on whatever it is and rebuking the devil. I don't know if because I used the word rebuke that all of a sudden I've been banned on this, but their reach has gone so much different on this broadcast. I want you to pray that we start developing some ways to where uh, these different platforms we use don't close us down whenever we say something that's not even wrong. I'm believing God to prosper you. I'm believing success in your life. I am simply saying, don't doubt what God has said, and I get banned. So stand on what it is, but you pray with me that, that, that you know, what God is opening up in our life, no man will put us under, no company can stop us on and help us to be able to stay on. All right. Hey guys, I love you. Uh, just standing with you and believing. And I want to pray with you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I come with each and every one of those who are hearing my voice right now, whatever circumstance they are in, whatever it is that they have been doing, God, as they've been following you, Lord God, I pray right now that as they are stepping, and they might not even understand why they're stepping, where they're stepping, but if they know that, they're, that your, their steps are ordered by you, that they will be able to step in faith, and God, they will begin to see. Just let them look. Open up the veil enough for them to see a picture of where you're taking them, God. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you for the success coming in their lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. And hey, I want to encourage each of you, whatever it is that you're believing for, put a faith extender out there. You start believing and put some faith out there. Put something out there you can see. I have got tile. I've got all the tile for my house that I have, and we're going to put the tile in. But with everything changing, when COVID hit, I sucked in and I didn't just uh, make dumb decisions. I've still got all the tile. I just haven't put it in, but I'm believing God. And you know what I did the other day is this, as I was putting in a new toilet in our in our bathroom, I took one of those pieces of tile and I slipped it under there to hold the thing in place as a faith extender. So that every time I walk in that bathroom, I look and I say, God, I know you're going to help me have the money to be able to tile this place and make it the way you want it to be. 
So stand on it, but get some things out in front of you that you can see because God likes using faith extenders on prosperity. You remember whenever each, uh, my dad's calling me right now. Hang on just a second, just a second. Hello, daddy. Dad, I'm good. I'm just sitting here doing my program right now. And uh, you call, I didn't get the phone all the way shut off, but I, it's so good to hear you. We are just talking about God ordering our path. And even though we don't see what it is, we are just believing and we can stand on his word. What he's told us, his promises are yes and amen. So. We don't know what what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Praise God. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Praise God. Well, you can call a little later, son. I will, Dad. I was going to call you as soon as I wrapped up, which we're getting close. So, praise Love God. You. I will call you as soon as I get done, Dad. Love you. Be blessed. Thank you. Bye. Praise God. Oh, that's Brother John. I know we're getting busy. We're doing some things. But let me say right now, you stand on the word. Stand whatever it is he's told you. You know when you've heard that you're his voice. It's not always the big voice. Don't always go with, well, this person prophesied this over me. Well, if you, you know, prophecy needs to be this. It needs to come as confirmation to what it is God's been telling you, not a revelation to you. So if those words, they bear witness in your spirit, God will tell you, God talks to you and he helps you in directions. But if you know you've got a word from God, we are standing with you right now. We're believing God for what he's going to do in your life. Amen. Praise God. You take care. Have a great day and God bless you. Bye-bye.